Hey guys, it's Anthony with The Rag Company, and welcome to Wash Wednesday. Today we are here with Freddy, also known as Tavarish. Yes. So dude, what kind of car do we have here? This is my 2004 Bentley Continental GT. man, so our Florida adventures continue here in your shop with this car and it is dirty. I'd say so, yeah. yeah. All the people ask us, hey, you never do a dirty car or when are you gonna do a really dirty car? Guys, this is the best we can give you. Unless you want us to do this Ferrari over here. You can do that one now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna need some more stuff for that. So okay. uh, anyway. Let's do this one. Yeah, let's just do this. This is a little bit easier. So we're gonna be sealing it with Beadmaker, of course, because no detail is complete without Beadmaker. And you haven't experienced that yet, but you will experience it. Am I in for a treat? It's gonna be really sensual and nice. Um, it's gonna get very intimate. I'm, I'm a little scared. You should be. So, <laughs> with, so give me a quick rundown on this car. What are we looking at? So this, in essence, is a Bentley Continental GT from the year 2004, and it cost me 11 grand. Now these usually go for a lot more than 11 grand, about 200 grand, but this one was neglected by its last 10 owners. So right now it's just in a, a really poor state. What I wanted to do with this car is just basically get it cleaned up and make it a really good example. And I think that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so the game plan. We're gonna cut this thing in half, right? You take the driver's side, I take okay. the passenger side. We're gonna need an angle grinder. We're gonna need a buzz saw, mm -hmm. a bunch of other things. You got that? <laughs> so what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna basically split this up to where he knocks out that side, I knock out this side, but I'm gonna give him a rundown on the wash showing him what we're gonna be doing. So what we have here is two IK multi-sprayers full of O&R. So that mixture of O&R is a rinseless wash is what we're using. Mm -hmm. So that is what's inside here. You might want to pump that down, it looks a little weird. So It, the, looks, it looks a little too excited. This, 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 is, this, is a, this is a plunger, <laughs> it feels like something's gonna explode if I do this. Um, no, you know, you're totally good. Oh my gosh, you shouldn't have done that. Okay. I'm just kidding. Right. We're gonna pre-spray with that O&R solution because mm -hmm. that O&R solution has polymer, not now, premature, man. So <laughs> we're gonna pre-spray because that O&R contains polymers that okay. are really, I mean, these things clean is what they do. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna encapsulate and pick up dirt. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is use a nice towel that is also soaked in O&R to pick up that dirt. And using the multi-towel method, that dirty towel is never going back in that bucket. So how aggressive is this O&R stuff? Not aggressive at all. Okay, it's not aggressive. So it's not gonna pull protection off if the car was waxed or something like that, it's right. totally safe. So we're gonna pump this thing up. It is a pump sprayer. You do have to pump it up. It looks odd when you have two guys doing it. Um, I'll race you. Oh, you've already yeah, you've already released. This, I have released, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so when you pump up to max pressure, there's a release valve on here that hisses oh. at you. Mm -hmm. And so you're good to go. I'm good to go. So we're gonna come over here, split this up. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's excited to okay. see you. So we're gonna go ahead and just mist that on. And what this is doing, this is actively beginning to clean. It's beginning to encapsulate and pick up that dirt and hold it in that bubble like I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. So how much is too much? Is there is there any sort of rule nope. of thumb? There's no such thing as too much, but the point of a rinseless wash is that we can do it indoors in a garage like this without making too much of a mess. So I do all my washes at my house with this stuff in my garage. It smells so good. <laughs> it smells so good. Don't drink it. Please don't do that. We can't have another guy die on this show. So after we've pre-sprayed it, that's totally fine. We're gonna let it sit for a second. And while we're doing that, we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna hand you a towel. We're gonna rinse this out to where it's not soaking. It's just kind of like that lightly damp, about right there. Okay. Can you feel the wetness? Yeah, 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 it's uh, it's really absorbent. You know what, it feels like it feels like a wet cat. Like a wet cat or a wet dog. Do you often feel wet cats? Yes, yes, in my <laughs> line of work. Lots of, lots of, no, of course not. Look at that. <laughs> what kind of show is this? <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and fold that into force there. Okay, I wasn't great at fractions, but there we go. So well, one force. more, yeah, there you go, okay. one more. So coming from here, we're gonna make one wipe and there you go. Flip it. Wow. So see all that dirt? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. And then again, so we flip the towel over. Now we have a brand new side. Like that? Yep, okay. and we're gonna go through, wipe it down, all the way through. Again, mm -hmm. more and more dirt. Now what's cool is we're gonna take that side, flip it to the other side, and voila. Okay. It's like, you know what I mean? It's common sense, but right. it's not common sense to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So this literally is one of the safest things you can do. So we're gonna wipe again. And then once you get good at it, you'll start going a lot faster. 
Obviously, you don't want to put the dirt into the paint. Correct. But so can we're you not, wipe twice on one side? You, you can, yeah. I mean, in, in the case that we are polishing this car, I'm not super worried about it. Yeah. But this is for the people that out there, I, I don't want to say this is for the haters out there, but this is for the haters out there. We're not applying a ton of pressure here. I'm not scrubbing it you know, into the paint. However, this towel being one of the safer towels to do for this method, yeah. you know, there's not much damage you could do. Okay. So flip that, we, do and that we have four way. more sides to work with flipping that over, and we'll be able to knock out this whole hood here, as well as this top portion of the fender. Uh, how many towels would you use in something like this? So with like a sedan or like a coupe or anything like that, I'd use anywhere from like six to 10 towels. Okay. Um, if I was getting into a bigger vehicle, like a truck or an SUV, um, I'd use upwards of 15, depending on you know how dirty it is, uh, how meticulous I'm trying to be, because the thing is, I'm not gonna be reintroducing these towels back into that bucket. But if I had a grit guard in that bucket, right, I'd yeah. feel a bit more comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just played off as, if I have a towel that's really not that dirty, right, and I've already used most of my other towels, I'll put that towel back in the bucket. It's just, mm -hmm. and reuse that area because that towel wasn't so bad compared to the others. Mm -hmm. So, you know what to do, I know what to do. You knock out that side, I knock out this side. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, dude, so I am almost done with this side over here. How are things looking? Oh my no, God, can, what are you doing? You can just stay on your side. Don't worry about my side. What, 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 what are you doing? So uh, there used to be a window here and now there's no window anymore. And in order to uh, close the car up, I had to tape something on here and the tape kind of stuck around, so. Good God, man. The, yeah, how much tape did you use? All of, all of all, it? All, all of it. All, I used all of it. Used the whole roll. Yeah, you don't want you don't want water in a Bentley. So uh, I'm gonna use my fingernail and I'm gonna just do this for the next few hours. So you can do whatever you need on that side. My side is okay, don't worry about me, okay? I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let me know if you need an extra set of nails. I know Dane is itching to uh, scratch something, am I right? You're a weirdo, Dane. All right, cool, I'm gonna get started on that side. Keep at it, man. All right. One eternity later. All right, dude, so how is the progress on the tape here? It's not bad. Uh, it's not good, but it's sort of in the middle. Yeah, I don't think it can get much worse than this. This is uh, pretty bad here. So typically when you have this much tape, I, I don't recommend doing this again. Did you, did you learn your lesson, by the way? No. Okay, he'll probably do it again. Typically with something like this, using Goo Gone, you can do that. Uh, they do have Goo Gone for automotive stuff, for stickers and vinyl. You can use lacquer thinner. Um, if you're experienced with using lacquer thinner, I don't recommend it if you are not experienced with it. Uh, however, this tape is so stuck on here, and it's not just the adhesive that's left over, guys. This is the actual it, tape. This is the actual tape. So, this is kind of hard to do regardless. Some people use plastic scrapers. You can use the Ivan LaCroix razor blade and car wax technique if you happen to have those type of razor blades. But realistically, with something like this, you do have to unfortunately pick at it until it comes off. Just elbow grease. Just a little or, bit of elbow or, grease. Or thumb grease. Yeah, use some tears as well. Eventually, you're gonna get through to where it's just blood mm -hmm. lubricating the uh, picking. Well, that got dark. Dude, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. Oh, good question, guys. So this right here is the Optimum Ultra Clay Towel. So, remember what, you know what clay barring is, right? Right. It's the thing that you drop on the floor and you're like, did anybody see me drop this on the floor? Can I put it back on the paint without people judging me? Well, it's the thing, if you, if you drop it on the floor, you never want to tell the internet about it. No, never do that. Never, <laughs> ever, ever do that. So this is replacing my clay bar. So it's a clay towel with the medium to fine grade clay on it. But what's really cool about it is that all the contamination that gets pulled from the paint actually goes within the pores of that towel. Oh, now, awesome. within those pores is just the fabric on the other side. So like a clay bar, you can't rinse that out, right? right. You have to keep kneading it to get to a new clean side. Whereas this right here, they run water through this backside, draining it out of the holes here on top. So it's basically like a reusable clay bar. Absolutely, and so that's, that's, awesome. the, that's the coolest part about it is for a business, right? You're yeah. buying it all the time, new clay for each new car you do, mm -hmm. whereas this thing is reusable. I mean, indefinitely if you're a hobbyist, right? Or if you're doing stuff here in the shop, yeah. this will last you years. I'm gonna show you this. So, do you hear a whole lot here? Yeah, oh. it sounds a little bit like, uh, 
Like sandpaper or something like that? Like a little bit like, a, like yeah, like I'd probably say like a very high grit sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna try it on that side over there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit louder, right? Yeah, yeah, and you can feel a lot of resistance. It does feel like a clay. It's, it's. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely gonna decontaminate the paint because basically what we're doing is we're pulling out the contamination out of the pores of the paint because mm -hmm. paint is very porous at a microscopic level. It's a bunch of peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. Now when the contamination sits within those peaks and valleys, it actually messes up with the overall reflection of light. Once we clean out those pores, we're gonna get more depth and more gloss to the paint. Okay. So that's the whole point of claying is where people say, my car looks shinier after claying. Well, yeah, because you probably removed a lot of that contamination that was on the surface. So since we're polishing, we're not too worried about that. Stuff is really cool. All right, so my side of the car is officially clean. What it's about looking... the wheels? The wheels, they, they need cleaning. What about the wheels? So these wheels have brake dust and also, I don't know about you, but uh, this is not exactly the preordained uh, way to do it. You have to do the wheels first. Yeah, that's what most people think. But with this method, no, we're not doing wheels first. We're doing wheels afterwards. So mm. using the multi-tile method, right, the entire time we have clean water, right? We have clean product inside this bucket. We're never reintroducing dirt back into it, which means that we're not having to sacrifice using dirty water on our wheels, right? Okay. Now I have clean water to use on my wheels. And right. I'm not wasting any product. I'm not having to dump anything out. And really this is using a ton less water than we would normally use. So I'm gonna grab my bucket, throw a couple wheel towels into mm -hmm. the bucket, uh, using some power clean, spray down the wheels. Normally we have a brush and all sorts of extra stuff, but we're mobile guys, we only have so much stuff. So we're gonna be using some towels with some power clean diluted at five to one. Okay, cool. So I know I'm nowhere near professional level at this, but I have cleaned a car once or twice. And it's always a really sort of cathartic process when you go from something that's really kind of dilapidated and past it to something that is very, very presentable, especially when it's a car like this. Now, even though this car is really cheap, I bought it really cheaply, it doesn't have to look cheap. All right guys, so Freddie's getting ready to start the polishing process yeah. on his side of the car. Uh, how are your nails? Recovering. Recovering, nice. All right, so he's getting ready to do that side. On this side, I've pretty much completed most of the major panels. I still have the front bumper to do and I still have the rear bumper to do, but other than that, it's done. So we thought this would be a good time to show you what a true 50-50 uh, for a one step would be. So this isn't a full on paint correction where we're going you know, balls out and doing that. This is truly one pad one compound, doing a couple different passes to see what our final result is. So do you want to lift this tape up? I think we should. Okay, all right, go for it, man. Oh, I get the honors. What kind of tape did you use? It's hard to, okay. It's a nicer tape, I would okay. say. All right. All right, so a little bit of a tape line. So we got the before over here. So there's some deeper scratches. There's definitely some marring, some swirling and whatnot. Uh, but it's not horrible. It's not the worst I've ever seen, right? Right, like it right. Has, yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, first of all, it's a lot better than what it was. Yeah. Just with a regular wash and a clay. Yeah, so coming over to here, a lot more clarity. Mm -hmm. Almost swirl free. There's still some deeper scratches mm -hmm. in, you know, in there. But um, other than that though, for a one step, I'm, oh, I'm wow. super happy with how that turned out. Yeah, that's a, that's a big difference. Cool, man. Well, since we knocked that out, let's get ready and uh, knock out the rest of the car and we'll touch base here in a bit. All 
All right, dude, so like I said, I would save one headlight for you. I saved you the big one because that one. apparently size matters. So we're gonna be using the last cut, like everything else we've been doing. Right. The last cut you can use on headlights and it works mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, the cool part of the last cut is it stain trim. So people, when it comes to compounding, right, you have to tape off all these things, tape off the trim. Last cut doesn't stain trim, just simply wipe it off and okay. you're good to go. So put a little bit of this onto this pad here. So we're gonna do four pea size drops. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get you primed out, and then from here you're just gonna supplement four more pea size drops after your first um, rotation on this uh, headlight here. Okay. So I'm just gonna spread that in with my thumb, get it through all the fibers. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I just wanna make sure that you're not gonna have, you know, get it gunked up. Just so it's areas. uniform, right? Yeah, yeah, just get it on there. So, yeah. it also so is, like this, is this for plastic specifically? No, so this is for paint, this is for everything. Chrome, okay. you can you can use, I mean, literally the last cut is my favorite all around compound. Okay. Because it's a pad dependent cut, meaning that if I'm using a wool pad or a microfiber pad, I'm gonna get a ton of cut. Okay. But if I step down to a foam pad, I can still finish out and polish with that foam pad. All right. You with me on that? Yeah, yeah, Makes of course. Sense? Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. So what we'll do, you're gonna go ahead, spread that around. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start on a speed setting. Um, we're actually just gonna set it to four. Okay. We're gonna flip up this button here and you're just gonna make several rotations. So probably go around in a circle, you can go up, down, left, right. Sure. You can't really cross hatch on a headlight, obviously. Right, right, it's not enough. So we're just trying to get it the best we can. Um, check your heat, make sure, you know, touch the headlight every once in a while, make sure you're not building too much heat. So um, how should I know when, when I'm done? Is it uh, when the, the stuff starts breaking down or is that too Yeah, late? you'll start to see it kind of like, right when the compound really starts to dis I, uh, disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, when it starts to be less and less visible and it kind of starts to look very foggy and hazy, mm -hmm. that's typically when you want to pull it off and add okay. either more compound or clean the pad. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna just hand this to you and okay. let you have a hack at it. All right, let's, let's check it out. Cool. cool. Now swipe it off and we will see the final result. So keep in mind guys, I've already done all of the other headlights, so really the true before and after um, can be seen earlier in the video. Dude, Dude, it looks awesome, man. That looks really good. You killed it. And so like, my biggest thing about headlights is old yellowing headlights, that really ages a car. I mean, I don't care how new the car is, if you have yellow headlights on it, it's gonna look old. So doing this, I mean, makes it look so much newer. Yeah, yeah. I think it really adds value to the car, especially if you're gonna be selling it. It makes sense to have clear headlights. And we're also gonna be sealing these. So right now there's no protection on them. We wanna get protection on them because when they start to yellow, that means the factory coating has begun to fail. Mm -hmm. So we're just polishing it up, getting them back to clear, and then putting some protection on them to keep them going. So I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of headlights are clear coated from the factory. Correct. Uh, so would this work the same way on those as well? Yes, so the thing is, is, so basically the deterioration, when it starts to yellow, that's actually the breakdown of that factory UV coating okay. that the factory puts on. And so what it really is, is just a clear coat. And mm -hmm. so very similar to like a 2K clear. Yeah. So I tell people when you're going for a full headlight restoration, you should always plan on re-clearing the headlights mm -hmm. and then you're good to go. Okay. Other than that, you can PPF film them, mm -hmm. um, but the best thing to do is really just to stay up on protection. So right now these are naked, yeah. and so we just wanna keep them protected. As long as we have some type of sealant or some type of wax on them, it should prevent uh, future fading. Okay. Alright guys, so we are in the loopy part of the detail. This is where we've started to, you know, basically see things. That looks like a massacre around here. There is polishing stuff, detailing stuff everywhere. But the but car we, looks good. It looks amazing. Yeah. And we've been working extremely hard. Literally everybody has pitched in on this. So we have Andrew over here who jumped in. Dane behind the camera here cleaned some glass as he always does. And then me and him have just been knocking through this man. And his thumbnail may be almost gone, but I mean, he does his own work. And I think that says a lot. And he also ripped on a polisher too. So we got to throw down on this car together. Oh yeah. So we're in the last final steps of this. So all we're gonna be doing is doing a paint coating surface prep. What this is gonna do, this is going to prep the surface, removing all the extra oils and polish oils and things like that from the polish that we are using. And what this is gonna also do, it's going to prep us for our protectant. So this is gonna allow our polymer sealant to stick. Oh yeah. We want it to stick, we want it to last. So this is what we're gonna do first. Uh, you got a towel? Now, now you do. All right, I got a towel. Let's do it. All 
All right, guys, so the paint prep is done and it is ready for the best part of the entire detail. The best is, part? It is the best part. It's called Bead Maker. We joke around at the office and call it Hype Maker because apparently there's a lot of hype around this product because okay. it's just that good. Right. In my opinion, I think it's great. I'm hoping you have the same reaction that I do when you feel how slick this stuff is. Okay. And this is coming from somebody that isn't a detailer, so mm -hmm. I'm really curious on what your thoughts are. I'm excited. I'm excited too. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna spray this down, apply a liberal amount. We're gonna be applying a lot of this. So probably close to half this bottle, if not three quarters of this bottle. Once we spray it down, mm -hmm. let it sit for a few seconds, then we're gonna be cleaning it off with a towel. Okay. And um, get his reaction on the camera. I'm, I'm really curious to see what he thinks. All right, ready? Yeah, I, 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 I think so, I hope All so. Right, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> okay. All right, so the application process is pretty simple. Typically, you just spray a liberal amount, wipe it off, but because we are in a high humidity area, yes. according to all of the commenters on our YouTube channel. And weather.com. And weather.com. What we're gonna do is we're gonna supply more to the towel here. Couple sprays to the towel. Couple sprays to the paint here. And what we're gonna do, let it sit for a couple seconds, start to work. Now how Bead Maker works is if I were to continually spray in this area, that area will actually start to beat up once that surface begins curing. Mm -hmm. So the more you spray, again, we're trying to spray more into the towel, less on the paint in this case. Okay. So from here, take our towel, wipe it through. Are you just working it into the paint? Yep, I'm just kind of slowly wiping it in, kind of finessing it in. Mm -hmm. And you'll start to see, it's not streaking, but it's, it, you'll, you'll see the trail of where you're wiping, right? Okay. And this is where flipping a towel and re-wiping the area or having a secondary towel right. and wiping the area will clean up that extra residue. Okay. So again, wiping in kind of straight lines going back and forth. If I want to flip the towel, I can do a couple more sprays here. Should the towel be 100% dry when you, when you uh, do this stuff? Yeah, when you first start, you want a brand new towel. Okay. For sure, you want a brand new towel, but again, we're doing a couple sprays onto the towel just to kind of dampen it up, okay. being in a high humid humidity area. So okay. I'm gonna let that sit for a second, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you finish and wipe off the rest of these final little marks here. Okay. Now what you're gonna do, so flip the towel to a dry side, mm -hmm. and now I want you just to lightly just glide the towel across the paint. Nice. Very nice, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot smoother. It's a lot smoother. Yeah. Now yeah. take the back of your hand and... Mmm, <laughs> nice, it's like glass. Right? It really is like right? glass. It's, it's completely different from this, like my hand is sticking, yeah. and this is like, it just flows. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, and the thing is, is that it has its own hardening agent, so mm -hmm. it actually just gets slicker. Right. So come back in a couple hours, it's gonna be even slicker, wow. even smoother. Typically people get anywhere from two to three months on a proper application like this. Right. You can also use it as a drying aid as you're washing and doing maintenance washes, mm -hmm. which is really cool. But ultimately, this isn't gonna be like a super longevity sealant like other sealants on the market, right? So a question, um, if I wanted to do a uh, ceramic coat, so yeah. I'd put on the ceramic coat and then I'd use a sealant over that, right? Correct, and so with, in Beadmaker's case, Beadmaker's actually one of the only few sealants that you can use on top of a ceramic coat because okay. it creates its own layer with its own hardening agents. Awesome. So mm -hmm. I have ceramic cars coated at home and I top them with this and they'll still feel slick uh, for weeks on end, which cool. is crazy. Because I think for this car, I'd like to do a ceramic coat at some point. Yeah. So uh, after we do this, then you know I'll get everything sort of set up with a ceramic coat, and then I'll uh, I'll put another yeah. coat of that on. This basically will give you the protection until you get the coating done. Mm -hmm. Top it off with more of this, and you're set. Awesome. All right, let's finish the rest of the car. So what I notice is that the depth of the color, you can see, like from back here, you can see the sparkle coming out. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the things it does is it not only does it add gloss, but it actually adds depth. So the paint always looks deeper. I mean, any polymer seal is gonna add depth. So don't get me wrong, it's not like this is a miracle in a bottle, but it's a good experience, right? I mean, it really does feel like glass. It, it's it's crazy, like there's nothing sticking to my hand. This is this is insane, you were, you were not kidding. So I mean, this is like the thing I look forward to, the, like at the end of the, every detail, mainly for the fact, I think it smells good. I like the way it smells. Yeah, it's very citrusy, it's very uh, kind of tropical. I'm like a smell know. guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, that's why you saw me over there smelling that motor oil. Hopefully you guys didn't see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> but no, I really like it. It's easy to use. It didn't streak on us, which is awesome. Yeah. And some people say it streaks in higher humidity. I have yet to experience that, but if that does happen, just apply more to the towel, mm -hmm. less onto the vehicle. Andrew kept filling the paint, what do you think? I uh, feel real good, like like the feel, feel real good. Car, car, car goes real fast. Yeah, car go real fast, real smooth, good car. 
Cool. All right. Well, we have, a three, <laughs> we have a couple other things to hit. Let's finish this thing up. All right, guys. So that is a wrap. We are officially done with the Bentley Continental GT. And not a moment too soon. It's it's so good looking, dude. dude. It, looks, it looks good. I mean, seriously, we all put in hard work, so this yeah. is well deserved. I mean, we spent half a day doing this, but between all of us here, between Freddie here, Dane behind the camera, we got Andrew over here. Dude, we all busted our knuckles here trying to get this thing yes. fat, you know, done, finished, protected, and it, it really turned out way better than I expected. When I first pulled up and saw this thing, mm -hmm. I was like, no way. There's, there's no it way. Was, it was a lost cause for sure, and, and we, we brought it back from the dead very literally. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And so now you're thinking, maybe I might not sell it, right? Mm, yeah, maybe. Maybe uh, Maybe you, I'll keep you, it. Maybe would, I'll sell you, it. would you like to buy a Bentley? I'm kind of interested now. <laughs> I really like this car. It's, so. it's, a, it's, it's a nice car. We're probably going to do more cars in the future with yes. you. So. Oh, yeah. If you have anything cool, let us know. We want to come back out. I think I might have something cool in uh, in the coming months. What does that mean? I don't know what that means, but I'm going to go with it because that sounds awesome. <laughs> so anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more. Please check out Freddie's channel at Tavarish. Yes. Please check out Andrew's channel at Wrench Every Day. Yep. <laughs> it, they're both great channels. So check them out, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We have links to all the products that we use down in the description of this video below. And as always, guys, stay tuned for more detailing videos and more Wash Wednesdays right here at the Rad Company. So the key here is to get a really good rhythm. All you have to do is take your thumb, maybe maybe the left or the right one, it doesn't matter. I'm a righty, so I take my thumb and just dig in just a little bit right there. Yeah, you can see it coming off. Oh yeah, there we go, guys. All right, so we got that almost done. Just take some goo gone, take a little microfiber towel, microfiber, and spray it on right there. And now you can't even see that I made a horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> I used to f with people when I worked at Starbucks way back in the day. They'd pull up and I'd pretend to be like a fucking like shitty voice recognition robot. Yeah. So they'd pull up and be like, thanks for choosing Starbucks. How can I help you? <laughs> they'd be like, they'd be like yeah, let me get a grande caramel macchiato. And I'm like, so that's one. Grande, caramel, frappuccino. What else can I get for you? No, 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 that was a caramel macchiato. Okay, so that's one. Grande, caramel, frappuccino at one. Grande, caramel, macchiato. What else can I get for you? No, no, just the caramel macchiato. So that's two caramel macchiato. I'd be like, your total is 1572. Please go forward. And they go, I only wanted the one thing. And I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry.